Namaste. So now let's take a look at verse 14 of Vichara Sangraham. Devotee, what is the real purpose of sannyasa, renunciation? Maharshi, sannyasa is only the renunciation of the I thought and not the rejection of the external objects. He who has renounced the I thought thus remains the same, whether he is alone or in the midst of the extensive samsara. Just as when the mind is concentrated on some object, it does not observe other things, even though they may be proximate, so also, although the sage may perform any number of empirical acts, in reality he performs nothing because he makes the mind rest in the self without letting the I-thought arise. Even as in a dream, one appears to fall head downwards, while in reality one is unmoving. So also the ignorant person, the person for whom the I-thought has not ceased, although he remains alone in constant meditation, is in fact one who performs all empirical actions. Thus, the wise ones have said. This is one of the most difficult points to get people to understand. That in reality, there is no doer and there is nothing done. Let's take the big view. The universe, the creation, the world, whatever you want to call it, the empirical existence, is one single, solid, monolithic creation. In other words, it's a done deal from beginning to end. It's already made, already created, and we simply move through it, or at least we have the illusion of moving through it according to time. Actually, nothing moves. Nothing is done. Nothing happens. Nothing changes. Nothing is created and nothing is destroyed. This is, I know, very hard for people to grasp. But the creation is made whole, entire. Huh? Aum Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnam Udachate That this material creation comes from that Brahman. And even though the material creation is complete and whole, that the fact that it comes from Brahman does not diminish Brahman at all. Why is that? Because the creation is an illusion. It's simply an appearance, a mirage. So the whole creation is one piece, one seamless architecture. It's created all at once in the beginning. And then we simply appear to move through it in time. This is why Ramana uses the example of a moving picture show, a cinema, a movie, like this video. This video is 30 still pictures per second. And um, a moving picture show, a cinema, is something like 15 per second. And this gives the illusion of objects moving and doing things, you know, people having different relationships and so on. 
but actually it's just a bunch of still pictures on a roll. So in the same way, this universe is static, completely determined from one end to the other. And we only appear to move through time. So then where is the room for I to be the doer? You see? There is no doer and there's nothing to be done. Everything happens. This is the truth. Everything happens and we simply observe it. We are the witness only, not the doers. So as soon as this I thought goes away or is uh, suppressed by spiritual practice, then we see the reality as it is, that nothing is done and nobody does it. It's simply going on by nature. And we have nothing to do with it, actually. Yes, the aggregate of the body and mind has a set of karma karmic results from previous lives and actions. But those are also static, unchanging. And only if we create this I and make it responsible for doing, huh? and then we have all kinds of judgments on what happens, as to whether it's pleasant or unpleasant or neutral or whatever. Then we create karma for the next life. We create the next life by creating I. As soon as we give up this nasty habit <laughs> and simply allow the creation to unfold as it will, without judgment, without attachment. You see, this is renunciation. This is sannyasa. Not simply changing your clothes, you know, to wear different color cloth. Or, you know, moving to a monastery somewhere, living in a cave and being silent. <clears throat> That's not sannyas, unless it's also the practice by which you get rid of the ego. But if you're sitting there in that cave all alone and thinking, I am meditating, <laughs> the whole thing is a failure. Try to understand. It's this fabrication of I that gets us in trouble. The um, story of myself as an individual is the delusion that sparks our fall into illusion, maya, that which is not. So we have heard this story all our lives that the empirical world is real, that the empirical self is real and is the doer and therefore becomes responsible for the acts performed and will be held responsible for their results in future lives. We've been given this story again and again and again by people who staunchly believe in the reality of the world. But if the world is simply a picture show, if it's just a movie, if it's just an unchanging block of apparencies that we move through according to the illusion of time, because we have become conditioned by material nature, well then, there's no body to do anything Nothing is done. 
It simply happens. This is sannyas. This is renunciation. See, this is enlightenment. When the false thought of I is given up and nothing remains, there is no body to be the doer. Then there's no doing. If there's no doing, there's no karma. There's a very nice sutta where the Buddha describes that what happens if the rising sun, the light of the rising sun, comes in through the window of a building and it falls on the opposite wall? Well, what happens if you remove that wall? Then where does it fall? And the devotee says, well, it falls on the ground. And then Buddha says, well, what if you remove the ground? And so the person says, well, it would fall on the ocean. And then what if you remove the ocean? And then it wouldn't land anywhere. So this is the point. See, to remove the receiver of karma means that the karma doesn't land anywhere. It's, there's no, it has no address. Huh? Just like if you send a letter and you don't put any address, or if you, you put an address that doesn't exist, then the letter comes back to you marked, you know, bad address or send a uh, recipient not found or whatever. <laughs> so if, if there's no one to receive the karma, then the karma is not received. It just goes on like the sunlight and doesn't land anywhere. This is the secret to getting free. This is the secret of liberation. See, this is the actual principle of renunciation. That not to exist as an individual, but simply to be part of the creation, like everything else. Animals, trees, plants, the weather, mountains, the ocean. They simply exist without ego, without individuality, without separation, without doing anything. Huh? They simply follow their nature and everything happens. So this is a life of freedom. It's like a child. You know, a child has no I mean, a really young child, like two years old, three years old, has no goals, no concept of who I am, <laughs> but simply lives life in every moment, whether it's pleasurable or unpleasurable or neutral. I had a dream about this the other night. There were all these children playing in the sunlight and they were so innocent. And I asked them, I said, don't you have any other purpose? And they said, no, no. Simply to be in the moment is enough. You see, this is the real self-realization. This is the real happiness, to give up desire, to give up this individuality, and simply exist in the moment and ride out one's prarabdha karma until one is released. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti, Aum.